Today we are taking a first look at the brand new ESU Log Sound 5 DCC Sound Decoder. It is the successor to the popular Log Sound 4 and Log Sound Select models. In this video I will be taking a look at the features of the new Log Sound 5 and comparing it with the previous generation Log Sound 4 to see what has improved. The information presented in this video are from my own findings by playing around with the decoder and also from my interpretation of the German Log Sound 5 manual. Currently, an English version of the manual is not yet available. In fact, this decoder is so new, it is currently not possible to buy one at retail. In North America, it is currently only sold in the DCC and sound versions of the Scaletrains.com General Electric-9 locomotive. For the demonstration of the decoder features, I will be using one of these spectacular Scaletrains-9 locomotives. Here I have the Log Sound 5 data from the Scaletrains-9 and the Log Sound 4 sound file from my older Scaletrains-8, both open side by side on my computer. This way it is easy for you, the viewer, to follow along and see what is different between the Log Sound 4 and the Log Sound 5. The CV1 address and CV19 consist address selection are still more or less the same. These are NMRA and NEM regulated standards, so it is unlikely that these CVs will ever change with a new generation of decoders. There has been changes for CV3 and CV4, which are acceleration and deceleration values. The older Loxon 4 used an increment of 1 for every 0.25 seconds of time from stop to pull speed. On the newer Loxon 5, an increment of 1 now equals 0.9 seconds. CV29, which controls several features of the locomotive, including the default direction, is still the same. A new feature on the Loxon 5 is that you can adjust the intensity of the switching mode function using CV101. On the Loxon 4, the switching mode function defaults to half voltage, and it cannot be adjusted by the user. Also new on the Loxon 5, you can customize two different locomotive load profiles using CV103 and CV104 as opposed to no customization on the Loxon 4. The Loxon 5 has this new feature called Gearbox Backlash. I assume it is used to compensate for bad locomotive mechanisms. Fortunately, the Scaletrains Dash 9 is a very smooth runner, so this feature isn't enabled. The Loxon 5 supports up to 32 individual function keys, compared to the Loxon 4, which supports only 29 function keys. The Loxon 5 decoder, at least the 21-pin version that is installed in the Scaletrains-9, supports two primary lighting functions and up to 10 auxiliary lighting functions. Auxiliaries 1 to 8 are either amplified functions at the pads of the decoder itself or logic-level functions at the 21-pin plug. Auxiliary 9 and 10 have extra functional abilities. Auxiliary 9 can be used to control the ESU power pack. Auxiliary 10 can be used as a wheel sensor for chuff synchronization on steam locomotives. Auxiliaries 11 and 12 are used to control serial interfaces or used to control servos, such as automatic panographs on electric locomotives. Auxiliary 13 to 18 are displayed in the menu, but I think these functions are only present on the Loxon 5L and XL models and are not available on the 21-pin MTC version. Instead of having one sound slot for random sounds on the Log Sound 4, the new Log Sound 5 allows the user to configure up to 8 different random sounds independently. You can see that this feature is disabled on the Scaletrains-9, which means it is likely that the Scaletrains locomotive is using an upconverted Log Sound 4 sound file, which does not have these Log Sound 5 exclusive features. Note that the simplified speed curve option is no longer available on the Log Sound 5 which means that you can no longer use CV6 midpoint to program the speed curve on these decoders. Complex speed curve and back EMF configuration is largely similar between the old and new decoder. The Loxon 5 include additional CVs to fine tune the motor back EMF. It is now possible to adjust the back EMF sampling period for slow and fast speeds independently. It is now also possible to adjust the distance between back EMF sampling periods there is even a helpful diagram to help you understand this new setting introduced in the Log Sound 5. Smoke unit control appears to be the same across both decoders. I am not too familiar with this because I don't own any locomotives with smoke units. You may recall on the older Log Sound 4 and Log Sound Select, the user is able to pick different bell and horn configurations using CV48. Now on the new Log Sound 5, 
the user is able to configure up to 16 sound effects independently under the Sound CV configuration section inside Sound Slot settings. For example, Sound CV9, which is CV163, controls the horn type on the Scale Trains Dash 9. Setting CV163 to 1 gives you a Leslie S3L. Setting CV163 to 2 gives you a Nathan K3. Setting CV163 to 0 gives you this cool Nathan K5LA. Sound CV10, which is CV164, controls the bell type. Setting it to 0 gives you a mechanical steel bell. Setting it to 1 gives you this e-bell sound, which appears to be brand new, as I've never heard it before. The sound selection should be completely user customizable, although I am not able to verify this yet. Now onto the most significant feature improvements of the Loke Sound 5, the sounds. The Loke Sound 5 now supports 32 regular sound slots, as opposed to 24 slots on the Loke Sound 4. That is 8 extra sounds that can be configured and played back on the decoder. You may notice that on the Scale Trains Dash 9 file, sound slots 26 to 32 are completely empty, which means this file is likely a Loke Sound 4 sound file that has been upconverted to Loke Sound 5, and not a true Loke Sound 5 file. In addition, the Loke Sound 5 now carries 128 megabits of onboard sound memory, which is 4 times more than the Loke Sound 4's 32 megabit chip. The Loke Sound 5 can store around 500 to 550 seconds of audio, which is around twice as much capacity as the Loke Sound 4. Almost 9 minutes of audio capacity means that it is very hard for you to run out of free space on the decoder. This concludes the technical breakdown of the Loke Sound 5 decoder, which was probably very boring to watch and listen. So now I am going to give you a direct comparison of how the new Loke Sound 5 fares against the older Loke Sound 4. Here is a Leslie 3 chime horn being played on the low programmer on my computer. And here it is played on my Dash 8 with a low sound 4 decoder. And here it is played on my Dash 9 with the low sound 5 decoder. I'm going to play all these three clips over and over again so you can have a comparison. On the Loke Sound 5, the horn has a tendency to cut itself off when you press the button in rapid succession. I'm sure this is one of the many bugs on the new decoder that needs to be fixed. Sound functions on the Loke Sound 5 is largely similar to the Loke Sound 4. Most of the function mappings are identical and they should be more or less perfectly compatible with each other. If you wish to hear a short sound demonstration of the Loke Sound 5 decoder, you can click on the link in the video description. The Loke Sound 5's motor control is extremely smooth. It appears to be even better than Loke Sound 4's motor control, which is very impressive, considering how good the Loke Sound 4 is already. One of the big improvements I have discovered on the Loke Sound 5 is that there is almost no audible motor drive humming noises during low speed operation. Compare this with the Loke Sound 4. This humming noise was one of the big complaints by Loke Sound 4 users. 
and it appears that ESU has resolved this issue with the Loxon 5, which is very good. This concludes my first look at the ESU Loxon 5 decoder. Like I said previously, this decoder is completely new, and there isn't an English manual available yet, so I'm fairly sure I missed a bunch of its new features. I do like all the extra capabilities and extra features introduced by the Loxon 5, especially the extra sound slots and extra sound capacity, which will be very helpful when I decide to mess around with the sounds. The sound quality is a welcome improvement, but I don't believe it is significant enough to make a difference, especially with the limited speaker capabilities we have in HO scale locomotives. Scale Trains is offering the Log Sound 5 in place of the Log Sound 4 on all of their 2019 locomotives and beyond, which is very cool of them. I hope other manufacturers will follow suit. It appears that the Log Sound 5 decoder will retail at around the same price as previous generation decoders at around 85 to 90 US dollars. However, as of making of this video, they are not yet available at retail. So if you have locomotives that need a premium and customizable sound upgrade, look no further than the ESU Log Sound 5 series of DCC sound decoders.